get the Bed Victor Championship League. Ronnie O'Sullivan is out on the table. Oh, Sean Murphy is in the commentary box alongside me, and we've had plenty of stuff to talk about. Next up, by the way, on table one, the final match of this session. Elliot Slesser remains in action against Jack Jones. If he could go into that match with a win over O'Sullivan, that would be a real boost. Yeah, I'm sure Ronnie will be slightly annoyed there. He collided with the yellow. It's left Elliot with a, a look at this long red. Is he trying to get through the gap for the black into the same pocket? Well, you can see he didn't play that. Sort of tried to cover his bets there a little bit and play with an element of safety. Might have been better going for it full-bloodedly. Might have got closer to it. Anyway, it's out of his hands now. He's given this opportunity to Ronnie. Red pots to middle and corner. I'm sure he'll play it to the corner. played and it has to be said Phil it's one of the elements of Ronnie's game that doesn't get talked about at all because he plays so fluently with his opposite hand and was, was the sort of first I suppose player to do that of course Dennis Taylor and a few others had done it and um, Ronnie you know I suppose it's not quite accurate to say he was the first to play with the opposite hand but he's certainly the best people forget how good he is with the rest He's actually one of the game's strongest with the rest. He just uses it so infrequently, you don't see it. Well, if you're saying that, Sean, you're very well qualified to talk about people's ability with the rest because when it comes to the, the conversation, it was the very best. You're always in it. I mean, obviously, he's not as good as myself and Kyron, but, you know, he's, he's OK. I think he's got a future. Modest Murphy. Thank you. What was really interesting here this week, Sean, and I picked up on this right from the get-go, even though he won Group 6 and played nicely in the end in the final, Corin Wilson yesterday, for the most part, was struggling. But his rest play never deteriorated. While the rest of his game was suspect, until the final, his rest play was out of this world. Of course, I am told, though, now that Kyron's no longer the best rest player in his house. I believe that one of his boys is a very good player. And extremely good with that implement as well. There's quite a bit of footage on his socials uh, with his family, which is nice to see. But Kyron, very, very strong in all areas. Along with myself and a few others, he's not had the greatest of seasons. And I'm sure he'll have more than one eye on Sheffield. It's only a matter of time between before Kyron picks up one of the... Triple Crown events. Meanwhile, Ronnie back in full flow. As we're so used to seeing that cue ball on a dime. Lovely shot there, played for one of two reds. Was always going to be on red to left middle. Underneath the pink, over hit, he's on this one. Plays that shot better than anyone. 40. Plays it on and off the cushion. Trying to keep that cue ball as close to the middle of the table as possible. Doesn't give himself a chance to get stuck on the, on the cushion. See the pace he injects into that. Always searching for the middle to give himself options. That wasn't by luck, that was by design. And again, controlled that cue ball beautifully. 46. The choice of reds. 47. It looks like another decider's on the cards, Phil. I think his money's worth. Fifty-four. I know, Sean, you're good pals 55. with Mark Selby. Did you speak to Mark after he'd beaten Ronnie? Because it wasn't just the results. 
It was the way it was achieved. I thought it was magnificent from Selby. I didn't, but I, I just think, you know, you write Mark Selby off at your peril, don't you? Um, 63. And of course, having grown up with him, you're just never surprised to see him play like that. He's been playing like that since we were boys. Four-time world champion, won everything there is going. And of course, there's the frame ball here in this frame. Here we are going all 70. the way in this match. But yeah, Mark, last week against Ronnie was irresistible. 71. Players coming into good form just at the right time of year, Phil. Being for a very interesting crucible campaign this year. Impossible to call. Clearly, O'Sullivan doesn't like the number one, two, four, two, so wants another century. Ninety-four. Now he was looking at that again. Maybe that ball, as you suspected, Sean, is tapering up towards the, the far jaw. Three Sullivan figures up for Ronnie O'Sullivan for the second time in the match. But it's far from one. It's going all the way. They've been made fighting back from a, a one-frame deficit. He was 1-0 and 2-1 down to Elliot Slesser. Now this contest is going into a deciding frame, just as his first match of this group did. If you're just joining us, he beat Sam Craigie 3-2. He made breaks of 52 and 60 to take a 2-0 lead. Craigie came back very well with runs of 78 and 105, which was his 100th century in professional competition. He becomes the 80th player to reach that mark. But in the decider, O'Sullivan found his range, made 79. So if he could start off with two wins already, you would be thinking he's playoff bound. As for table two well it's joe o'connor against jordan brown and as i'm talking to you the fourth frame has just been conceded by brown o'connor won it by 78 points to nil so that one is also gone the distance the last match over there in this session will be joe o'connor in action again against sam craigie here elliot slesser will take on jack jones after this will he be in a good mood or not Side in frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan to play. Always breaks off left handed, Sean. Any scientific reason? Yeah, it's a it's a funny one, isn't it? I, I remember asking Ray Reardon that question because obviously they paired up together and I worked with Wub Ray for a little while. Watch Elliot Slesser try and slot this red in. Must avoid the red by the black. Well done. Expertly played. One. I seem to remember Ray being of the opinion, at a, in a bit like a golf scenario, for a right-hander it's easier to hit a fade to make the ball go left to right. I seem to remember Ray being of the opinion that as a left-handed player it was easier to play with right-hand side than left-hand side. And I've got a feeling... That might be why Ronnie chooses to break from between brown and yellow, but use the other hand. I think it might have come from Ray that, believing he could get more on. Six. Begs the question why he didn't just switch sides and play with right, <laughs> play right-handed, but with left-hand side between brown and green. But he's always done his own thing. Seven. Thing is, these days though is. What we're seeing illustrates 
The break-off has to be so accurate. Yeah, I mean, the game's changed, you see, beyond all recognition, really. Although, although to the casual observer, snooker doesn't look to have changed over the years. The table's still green, has six pockets and 22 balls on the table. Every part of that equation has changed. And one of those elements is the balls have got a lot lighter. Uh, there's a there's a old footage on YouTube fly, flying around of I think uh, Doug Mountjoy and playing in pot black breaking off against Pullman. He breaks off and almost resets the balls perfectly because the balls are now so light. That can't happen anymore, and it's become such an important shot because you, it could that could be Ronnie O'Sullivan's last shot in this match. It is amazing that we haven't yet as a body of players come up with a better option. But I'm not sure what it is. It's not for the lack of trying, I can assure you. Well, don't want to goad you into controversy, Sean, but what are your views on the Mark Williams break, which he was employing earlier this season and last when he was coming off the top cushion into the, the bunch? Yeah, I think I think a lot of players have just become sick of potentially their break-off being their last and only contribution to the frame. And I think I, I actually have nothing wrong with it. I mean, I, you know... Break off is just to get the match started, isn't it? It's just to start the frame, and, and, and that's all that does. Uh, you have to decide if you think the break off's an attacking shot or a defensive shot, the idea being to get another turn. Well, in which case, Mark Williams' break ticks all the boxes. He didn't lose many frames by doing it. And that, of course, is the, that's the job, isn't it? In our last segment of matches in the Championship League here, Neil Robertson actually employed that break on one occasion. Anyway, the sum and substance of this is that Slesser's got a great chance to get the verdict. 38. He's just lost the cue ball, though, at the wrong time. You can see he's, he's stopped himself there in his tracks. He's not on this black correctly. Black's going to put him 45 ahead. Where does the next red come from? Then one possibly available to the yellow pocket. Sure. He wanted more angle than that to split the reds. Just lost the cue ball at the wrong time. Oh. Of that red that's closest to the cue ball to be potable. Very tight past the other one. 45. Shake of the head from Elliot, so that tells us that he's not on that red correctly. Very, very tight. May be able to pot the one next to it, but the cue ball will be running into traffic, so that's got risk attached. And the 45 point lead could evaporate in seconds, so possibly the biggest stage of the match right here. I was taught by a dear friend John in the club where I grew up, if in doubt, play safe. Obviously I ignored him for most of my career, but does this red go? Lesser 45. You can see the reaction from Elliot. It's as if he knew the red didn't pop, and yet he still went for it. Didn't like it, but played it anyway. The mind of a snooker player, Phil. Didn't like this, but still played it. Maybe it turned off. I don't know. Well, that one didn't. O'Sullivan dispatching the red, even at professional level. You would think players would know better, but even at this level, the highest, wishful thinking sometimes comes into it. Six. Do you think players from yesteryear, Phil, you know, from the 70s and the early 80s, players obviously who are no longer around playing the game, do you think they would they could see the way the game's played today and the risks that players take, would they cringe or would they be impressed? Some would cringe, some would be impressed. <laughs> but I think the ones who were impressed would be the correct ones. Well, he wasn't impressed with the result of that shot. Cue ball did seem to die off those two cushions. He's still on the shred, but not as he 
meant to be. Now he needs a good angle on the colour here, wants to avoid the brown. And if he does get past the brown, he'll be perfect on it. And he is. Couldn't put the cue ball better with his hand now. Pot the brown on and off the side cushion. Smidge of right hand side. And if he gets this cannon correct, could be game over. Well, he didn't get the cannon as played. And that's not unlucky. That's not, he didn't hit the red he meant to hit. He meant to hit the one right in the middle of that bunch. But of course, as we always say, he got the pot. And that means he can play Sullivan the first seven. safety shot. Which isn't one of his best. Goes without saying, though, Elliot on very thin ice here now. To be very, very careful. played there is nobody better in the game at this shot you can see he's playing it with left hand side and that just means pairing the cue ball away from the red as it comes down the table such a skillful shot that Ronnie's just played looks like a nothing shot that cue ball was always arcing away from the red didn't go in a straight line was always pulling away to encourage that thin contact and that put Elliot Slesser in a world of trouble side he's having to play this to get around the blue caught it way too thin needs cover needs cover hasn't got it so that great safety shot from Ronnie that looks so innocent has now given him a chance to counter I think he'd enjoy building a decisive break here, considering the way it was created. Seven. Always interesting watching Ronnie go about these breaks because there's a correct sequence you to take the reds in to make the breaks Eight. that bit much easier. It's not all about cue ball control can see purposely played the angle on the pink to get to the red on the black spot didn't want to pop the black before this red was moved seems obvious but a lot of players miss 14. it and they end up in trouble not O'Sullivan needs an angle on the next color to get to the other side of the table for the red in the opposite pocket by the black 15. which he's got perfectly on the pink and Elliot's hopes now rest on the the black that Ronnie's about to play after this next red because he'll be holding for the black looks at the angle there that's where I want to be that leads to the cannon on the two reds on the cushion 21. which should lead him to the frame the next cannon on the black could be game over bear in mind he has missed one important red along that top cushion already. That's why he wanted to make that as simple as possible and talk about on the nose. 29. 30. There just aren't many players who would have played that shot like that as we see action on table two. Jordan Brown in the balls. 43 point lead. Meanwhile, O'Sullivan the frame and match at his mercy now. Brown, whose claim to fame was beating Ronnie O'Sullivan in a two-session final at the Welsh Open. What an achievement that is. Beating him over any distance is an achievement. 15 in front. 
make that 18. So the brown is frame and match ball. What we've seen, Sean, he's not here on a jolly. 55. That was a brew of brilliance and brinkmanship. Back-to-back 3-2 victories for Ronnie O'Sullivan. He moves to the top of the Group 7 table early on as this Bed Victor Championship League just elevates a notch with his presence. Next up on table one, it is Jack Jones and Elliot Slesser. The action will recommence in around five minutes' time. 